On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. So as usual on my tutorials, I'm using an iPad Pro and the app Procreate. But that doesn't mean you can't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow my process and techniques and recreate the image that I'm going to show you. However, in terms of Procreate, I've opened an A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. It's one of the default sizes within Procreate anyway. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using within airbrushing, the soft brush and the medium brush, possibly the medium hard brush, but that's probably it. I'm likely to also use within inking, the studio pen, within artistic, the leatherwood brush, and also within organic, the rainforest brush. I will start with a pre-prepared palette and each of the colors in the palette has an associated hexadecimal code, which you can find in this area under value. Each of these codes is listed down in the video description. Take a note of them and type them into this space one at a time, press enter. The color appears up here and then you can just tap it to get it yourself. Or alternatively, there's a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free to save you some time. If you do like this kind of tutorial, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you're notified of all my future videos too. And with that said and done, let's get started. So we're on layer one. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna choose the first color on the top row and we're just gonna drag from the little circle into that area and it will flood fill the entire canvas. I may as well stay on the same layer. I'm gonna to go to the second color along. I'm gonna to go to my brushes. I'm going to go to the airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to put the brush quite large at around 30% and the opacity to 100%. And starting from about halfway up to almost near the top of this corner, I'm doing a stripe and then I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur it in to about the 50%. I'm then going to create another layer, layer two, go back to my colors third color along on the top row. Go back to my brushes. I'm going to switch to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to put the size at around 5% and low on the opacity at around 15%. I'm going to start just tapping in some of this extra color and it's really subtle initially. I don't mind that. I'm going to go back into it with a stronger opacity version of it, but we're just getting some really subtle texture to begin with. Then I'm gonna put it up to about 50% opacity, a little bit down to about 3% size. And I'm just going to start tapping in a few shapes, allowing it to be slightly fragmented and kind of broken. And I don't mind it extending up into the darker area too. So we're gonna get a switch from being or appearing dark on a light background to appearing lighter on a darker background. And we just sort of tap some of these textures in. I'm going to create a new layer, go back to my colors and use the fourth color, which is a bit darker and with just a little bit more focus, so down to 2% size, stay on the 50% opacity. And we just want to begin putting in some slightly darker, just more distinct shapes at this point. So again, we're just tapping in some of these textures don't really need it to be too specific. I'm just allowing it to kind of freeform, quite random across this sky. Maybe some lighter touches, a little bit higher up, sort of almost quite stretched out, a collection of taps, but almost in a stripe. and then reduce it down even more. So the lower part of 2%, just before it switches into one, and then maybe in this really low section, just a collection of even smaller fragments and bands of this texture. I'm going to put it back up again, somewhere about the 8%, stay on the 50% opacity. And I'm just going to allow perhaps this cloud to just collect a mass into a larger shape as it comes more towards us. We just 
have it grouping together a little bit more maybe and turn it down 4%, maybe the opacity lower too, at about 20. And just have a little bit more at the bottom as well. Much of this is about to be obscured by sort of more, more mountains and hills anyway. Okay, so we're going to create another layer, layer four, go back to my colors, the fifth color along, which is this really nice pink color. If we go to the color disc, you can see it. It's in this red pink, but it's slightly more towards the white, so a little bit pasteled. We'll stay on the same brush, the rainforest brush, put it down to 3% size and stay probably at the 20%. And we're gonna do a really, like just the remnants of a sunset showing through still. It's, the sun's kind of disappeared, but we're just seeing that pink glow still. And just on the underneath of some of these clouds, we're just gonna tap in lightly. Just the suggestion that some of that pink is still catching the bottom of these shapes. Maybe we could turn it down even further to 2%. And we're just with a little bit more precision. We're gonna really focus it around this side, but I'm just doing a hint over here. Just a few taps and bands that kind of collect together here. And I can do some passes, some stripes, sort of stretched out shapes. Like so. Then go back in and just make it slightly more random so it doesn't look too much like straight line stripes. Break it up a little bit. I'm gonna go over this with an even lighter color anyway. I'm just gonna tap over it. Just add the extra textures in there. We're already starting to get that really nice sort of subtle glow. Okay, I'm gonna create another layer, layer five, but I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal. If you tap on that little N, scroll down to add, and you'll notice it changes from an N to an A. I'm also gonna change color to this next pink, which is just a little bit more intense. I'm gonna stay on the rainforest brush still, probably at the 2% size, but it needs to come down in opacity because if I show you at 20%, it's really quite strong, it looks too much. So I'm gonna put it down really low, it's about 5%, and it's gonna be subtle, so maybe lowest part of 2%, 5% opacity, and then we can just start ramping up some of the light in this area, not too much. I'm gonna switch colors to the last color on the top row, which is, looks really intense there. But when we apply it here with the add blend mode, then it has a different quality than it would do if you used it on a normal blend mode. So I'm gonna keep that at the 2%, put it, well, let's try about 15%, because we do want it to have an impact, but not too much. And then I'm just going to allow it to sort of bring out this really more intense look. Again, I'm just working in bands, but also just allowing it to fragment and just tap it in as well as I move across. So it's a combination of just sliding it across whilst also collecting those little taps. You can hear that probably. And then maybe there's a gap and maybe it just picks up a little bit more higher up. And then maybe even a little bit more up here, something like that. I'm gonna create a layer on top, leave it on the normal blend mode, go back a color to this pink again, Turn it up to about 5% and keep it at 15% opacity. And I'm just gonna go over some of what we've just done just to kind of allow it to blend in a little bit better, and soften it all together. I think that works. Though, now I've done that, I'm thinking what I'd like to do is just drag that layer so it goes underneath layer five and it still brings it all together, but the impact of layer five being on top just makes it glow a little bit better, I think. Go back to layer five, use this intense color, turn it down, lowest part of 2%, still on the 15%, and just with a little bit more specificity, just go in there and tap a, a few more textures if needed. Now your sky doesn't need to look exactly the same as mine, this is just a process, a technique, 
and a demonstration so that you can use it in your own way. So don't worry if it isn't exactly like mine, it's not really going to be possible to copy every single shape and I wouldn't even recommend it. It's just hopefully helpful to give you a sense of, of how to do this kind of sky. Okay, I'm gonna create another layer on top, layer seven. Go back to my colors and I've used the top row, so I'm gonna to go to the second row of colors, first color with the airbrushing medium hard brush set to maybe 4% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna start over here. Make sure you press on as well, otherwise the pressure sensitivity is just gonna ruin that 100%. As you can see, I'm pressing on lightly, it hardly does anything. So make sure you're pressing on too. And we're just gonna draw these sort of distant mountain shapes. You can always amend these later on so it doesn't matter too much, but something like that. And then I'm gonna drag and flood fill in the remaining gap. Now, if you're not entirely happy with it, you can always go to the transform. You can readjust it, move it around, put it wherever you want. And you can also long press on the eraser. And then you'll see on the eraser, you've also got the medium hard brush selected for erasing things too. So I'm gonna do that with a bit more accuracy at 2% size, still 100% opacity. But it just means now I can just remove specific areas, really control those finer details and shapes like so. Maybe just clip off certain sections, reveal a bit more of the sky if I feel it's necessary, something like that. And that's just layer one anyway. I feel sometimes as you go along, another thing you can do if you don't quite like what you've created, but you can see some aspects of it that work. I'm gonna to go to the transform, I'm gonna to go to the free form. I'm just gonna pinch it this way. And I feel like I just want a bit more of the sky revealed there, so I can do that. And then I can go back to the brush and I can just finish adding whatever I need to on this side. The great thing about digital, obviously, is it's infinitely flexible and amendable. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer eight. So I'm gonna to go to the second color on the bottom row, still with the medium hard brush. I'm gonna put the brush size up a little bit to 10% and I'm initially going to just press hard and just create this shape and I can always delete some as required. So I'm gonna do a shape across there, drag to fill that bottom section of it and that will do initially. We'll go in and we'll back in and amend it as required but we'll create another layer, layer nine, go back to our colors, third color along, turn it down slightly again so we're more at the 4% size, 100% opacity and I'm going to pick a point for kind of like our horizon line, or at least where the, the, the land meets the water. So I'll do a stripe across there. And again, you can still move the, the transform tool and you can move that line down if you feel it's not quite placed correctly. And we can go back in and just rough up that top edge. We want it to be a relatively straight line as it hits the water. But this top edge, like I say, can just be a bit more random. Like so. Create a new layer, layer 10. Go to the fourth color along and do something similar again. So I'm just gonna draw a line from that point across. Snap, or hold it to snap rather. And then you can just create a kind of rough texture along here. And then maybe have it stop there. And maybe just another one here as well. Something like that. I might just join them up. Now I'm just gonna go back through my layers. So I've got layer seven. I'm gonna to go to that layer first of all. Going with the soft brush, I'm gonna pick the first pink color on the top row, and I'm gonna put the opacity down to about 5%. And I'm just going to slightly go over this area, with this pink, just soften in some of that darker blue color. And across here too, but not so much on this side, but more focused over here, like that. I don't feel like I need to do very much with that distant layer so I'm going to go to the next one layer 8 so we're just going to go to our smudge tool and we're going to use the medium brush on the smudge we're going to put it down to the lowest part of 2% at about 50% strength and I'm just going to push this layer up in places in fact let's put it up to 100% let's really go for it I'm just going to push up create some spikes and anomalies that are very much in the distance we don't want to go overboard with these but it's stopping it being completely flat and featureless. 
and it's just not going to be just a sharp edge like it would be more in the distance where you don't notice those individual tree bumps but for this lay you would so we're just creating some things that stick up really so we can just run across and anywhere where it's really prominent up here you're going to notice it just spend a moment or two on those otherwise i'm just going to quickly cut across and i'm adding some over to this side but i'm actually going to take this opportunity to go back in with the eraser I'm going to put the eraser on the soft brush. I'm going to put it to about, well, 5% size and low at about 30% opacity. And I'm just going to soften some of this layer so it kind of blends in with the details behind it. So it becomes less obvious where this begins and where the other one starts as well. So they just kind of merge together a bit. I think that works nicely. On layer eight, I'm just going to go back again to a lighter color, maybe less of the pink maybe something like the third color along on the top row, still with this soft brush, put it to about 5% size, low on the opacity at 5% too, and I can just subdue some of it as it comes over to this area. Again, it's just gonna pick up a little bit more of the light. That is really low actually, so put it up to more like 15. Let's just have it soften it in here a little bit more. Not too much, we're then gonna to go to layer nine, Again, with the smudge tool set to medium brush, 2% size, 100% strength. And again, we can just push this a little bit. In fact, we could change brushes perhaps. So we'll go on the smudge tool, we'll go to the artistic leatherwood brush. So down again to the 2%, 100% strength. And we can just push up from that point, maybe even lower really low on the 2%, almost the 1% or the 1%, either one. And we can just, again, push up. Again, we're creating similar bumps and textures, but because we're using a leatherwood brush, it's just a bit more fragmented even than it was. And this just creates a slightly more textured and believable series of treetops. And we can work all the way across here too. Again, none of this is great labor intensive techniques or stages that just, just take a moment or two, like so. I do feel this layer is a little bit lighter than I imagined it would be. So I'm gonna, on that layer, go to the adjustments, hue, saturation and brightness, and it's automatically set to 50%. Whoops, I just nudged it. But we can just take it a hint in the direction that we want. It's gonna have implications to the layer underneath it but we'll put it to 49%. Also on layer nine, I'm gonna to go to the soft brush again, and perhaps with the second color on the top row, with a low size, it's around 3% and about 10% opacity. I'm just going to, at the bottom part of that layer, just lighten it up a little bit, because I think it's gonna to serve to really just push the next layer forward a little bit and just exaggerate the darkness of this next shape, something like this. So just at the bottom part of that shape, just like a low lying mist, I think will work really nicely. Then we're gonna to go to layer 10 with the smudge tool, again on the leatherwood brush, again on 1% size and 100% opacity. And now we can just push up this next layer to create those little treetops that are gonna stand out more prominently now because we have a, a just a slightly lighter mist and backdrop for them. And again, just push it around a little bit over on this side. Now, some of this is gonna get obscured by details I'm about to add on top, but it doesn't really matter too much. It doesn't take particularly long, so it's not a major concern. Something like this. Um, I'm gonna go back in with the eraser, which again, is still set to the soft brush. It's still at 5% size and 30% strength opacity. And I'm just gonna remove the edges, of this edge anyway, just have it blend in, soften in a little bit more. I think that works nicely when we do that. And again, just some low-lying mist. Just chip away a little bit at the bottom section. Maybe just remove some of this, the gap in the middle. I think it'd be quite nice to just have a break. Again, just soften this bottom edge. So there's a nice mist. And we're starting to get a nice effect, I think. Look at that. Oops, I seem to have unticked layer eight there for some reason. I'm not sure what, how that happened, but there you go. It's back again now. I'm not sure at what point I actually unticked it, but it's back where it should be. 
and you can see everything in context, I think it's starting to work nicely. So what I'm gonna do, rather than copying or merging all the layers and copying them, I'm just gonna to go to the wrench symbol, the add, copy canvas, and then the paste illuminates and you can tap on there. And you can see the section that it's now copied and you can see it also illustrated in the thumbnail on the very top layer. So on that layer, transform, flip it vertically, and we also need to remove this top section. So I'm gonna to go to the selection, rectangle, and I'll just move it so I can select it more carefully, drag from the top area until you can see your selection box matches the line where the land meets the water, something like that. Then go to the layer, tap on that, and clear. Then go to the transform, move it down, and you can position it, line it up, really nicely so that you get that beautiful reflection effect. Then on this layer, I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, motion blur, and slide it to the side to about 15%. Then with the selection tool on freehand, I'm just gonna select and draw around this bottom section, and I want it to be even less in focus than the details that were closer to the source of that reflection, and then with that selected area, I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it into the side to about the 10%. And if you do get any little anomalies, you can always go back in with the smudge tool. Again, set to the airbrushing soft brush, and any little areas now where we did the freehand selection, but it hasn't quite blended it, you can just go in and push it around until that becomes less noticeable, and that's fine. Next, we're gonna create a new layer, layer 12. We're gonna to go to our airbrushing medium brush, back to our colors. We're gonna use this color, which is the fifth color on the bottom row, down to 2% size. And well, I'm gonna do it gradually. So I'm gonna put it at 40% initially. And we're just gonna have it here, not quite at the top point where the water meets the land in the background, just slightly forward of that. We'll just do the point at where it begins here and maybe I'll turn it down even more so the lowest part of or even at 1% why not once it just disappearing into the water maybe even super low on the one really thin line just at the water's edge and then back up again 2% we we'll just have it rising up to more of a mound shape then we can just keep it at maybe the top end of 1% slightly up on the opacity to about 70%. And we can just start some tree trunks, some organic shapes that are growing up from there. Keep it sort of as a fine trunk, as maybe twists and turns, has a bit of kind of gnarly character. Yeah, just some things that kind of grow up from that point really. Maybe even turn it down to the 1%, just add some slightly finer branches here. So money, Pressing on lightly, just trying to create suggestions of things initially. This one's a bit more distant. We're gonna do one that's closer to, but still it's important that we have some initial branches. Then we're gonna to switch to the organic rainforest brush, put it up to about seven, put it to about 4% size and about 50% opacity. Now you don't wanna overwork this, but I'm just gonna subtly do some textures at the bottom. Just that was it, maybe a touch there and then just maybe something up here and up there. And it just creates the kind of like a hint that there's lots of fine branches added to the mix of those thicker branches and the combination kind of works. You can turn it really low to the 2% and then maybe just bulk that out in its one or two areas, just strengthen that up, especially perhaps in the low lying areas. So you're gonna get a buildup of layers of fine branches. So yeah, why not? maybe even just something up here as well. Then we can go back. Perhaps now we could choose the studio pen with an inking, put it at around, well, it needs to be quite small, still about 5%, about 20% strength. And we can just firm up some of these branches. And again, it's pressure sensitivity, or pressure sensitive rather. So if you press on more or less, you get a different strength line. So you can really go in there now and just add some more noticeable branches in the mix whatever you choose. Now, obviously we're not zooming in a great deal to this. I do generally work my detail to, to the point where you get the overall effect for these tutorials. 
And then obviously I go to a bit more detail in my Patreon exclusive content. But even then, there's a time limitation if I was doing this as a, a, a personal painting. So I'm just bulking this out a little bit more. Perhaps I'll go back to my airbrushing, medium brush, put it up to about top end of 2%, 70% opacity. And again, I can just firm up some of these shapes and bumps like so. Okay, so we can go to that layer, slide and duplicate it. And then to the top version, I'm gonna to go to the transform, flip it vertically, and again, drag it back down so that it aligns with the top version. And if you're struggling to line it up, just you can zoom in a little bit and then just push it around so that it matches. And with that version, we can go to the adjustments, motion blur, just blur it in slightly, doesn't have to be overkill. Having said that, I quite like pushing it a bit further actually, I think that kind of works. So not quite 15% in my example, maybe about 12, that works nicely. So add a new layer, we've got layer 14. And again, with the airbrushing medium brush, set to 2% size and maybe about 50% opacity. I'm just gonna work a little bit lower down than here. It's closer to us, which is why we've got this more saturated black and I'm gonna press and hold, draw a line until it snaps. And again, you can use the transform and you can move that to wherever you want it to be. I'll put it there, reduce it down even further to the 1% and I just want it sort of petering out of the water at the edge. And then maybe, I don't know, a couple of just bumps where it kind of fragments at the very edge. And then I can turn it up to more of the top end of two and we can just create a shape above that line where we're gonna have things growing. And maybe there's even, turn it back down again to the 1%, maybe there's even another shape that just kind of merges with it slightly more off there as well. Don't have to be too specific. Then I'm gonna to switch to the organic rainforest brush, set it to about 4% size and 40% opacity. And I'm just going to work along that edge and just create a series of lumps and bumps and shapes there. I'm going to turn it down even more. So it's really subtle, it's about 15% opacity. And I'm just going to create an area in this top section that represents the kind of top of a tree. So we're going to have lots of little fine branches here that we don't necessarily, you know, we can't necessarily pick out the individual fine branches, but we just get a sense of a kind of shadow area. Then we can go back in with the airbrushing medium brush, set to maybe the lower part of 2% and about 70% opacity. And we just want a tree trunk that cuts through, sort of twists and turns until it sort of disappears off near the top. And maybe another one that leans this way, again, just disappears. But a thickening towards the base, the tree trunk, maybe a couple of hefty branches that grow off there as well. I'm gonna to switch to the inking studio pen, put it at around 5% size and 70% opacity, and it's pressure sensitive, so press on lightly, you're gonna skin it some really fine branches. Press on more, you get some thicker branches, and just do a few now growing from it. I don't want to do too much of this. I think almost subtlety is key. The more you really get bogged down in drawing these individual branches, I don't know. I think it's in some ways it looks more fake. So if you can create just the impression with less work, actually, it, it serves the, the realism a bit better. So we just want to be subtle, adding those little fine lines in here. And then anything that's kind of growing up from the, the ground level, we might just get some little branches that stick up here and there as well. Again, don't go overboard with the detail. Well, I'm not doing anyway. You can, you can do whatever you want, whatever pleases you. You can absolutely go for it, but I'm just trying to keep it at a minimum the odd one or two branches that just stick up perhaps, just kick up and are more noticeable. And then over here perhaps just one or two. Maybe turn it down even further to 3% size and super low on the opacity, it's about 15%. Let's see. And you can just go in there and just really tap in a few dashes and lines. This isn't necessarily going to, you know, stand up to intense scrutiny if we zoom in. If you want that kind of level of detail, then you're just going to have to spend a long time adding those little branches. I'm just about getting you to the, the overall effect efficiently. 
and just help you gain confidence without overwhelming you in too much all at once. And as obviously you get more confident, you might really want to push those that level of detail further and that's absolutely fine. You should go for it then. But in the, the meantime, the meanwhile, let's just get something that looks pretty decent in a slightly more shorthand way. And you can always go to the selection freehand and perhaps just draw around a section like this. Three fingers down, copy, three fingers down, paste. And then you've got another branch area that maybe you could flip horizontally, move that to another area, and it's just going to help double up the effect, and you can do it that way. And you can always go to it, tap on it, merge down, selection, freehand, draw around the section you've just created, three fingers down, copy, three fingers down, paste. And then you've got another shape that you can just move to your heart's content. I would recommend flipping and various different ways or you can rotate it obviously and put it wherever you think will suit it's going to save you a bit of time anyway again layer tap on it merge down selection draw around it three fingers down copy three fingers down paste flip it horizontally move it somewhere else maybe just adjust the scale something like this now, obviously, you're going to start to, if you're not careful, get something that just really looks a bit disjointed and maybe a little obvious in terms of recognizing patterns. You can go back in with the eraser at this point. Let's, sorry, let's merge it down first. So tap on the layer, merge it down so it's all in one layer. Eraser, soft brush. Let's be a bit more accurate. So 2% size and about 40% opacity. And any little strange areas now that it's created, anything that just stands out too much you can just go in there and adjust it as required. If it looks too obviously a repetition of that, you can just go in, remove some of it, create some gaps, perhaps where there wasn't before, until yes, it looks just a little bit more unique. You can also thin down some of that shadow area too, just by tapping it away a little bit. Or you could turn it down even lower, about the 10% up, to about the 4%, and just over those shadow areas, just knock them back a, a little bit more, soften them in. Put it up a little bit, just be a bit more brutal removing some bits. Stop at the level of detail that you're happy with. I think looking at my composition, I want to shift it all slightly to the side. So I'm going to go back to the layers 12, click on the top version, merge down. So that's on one layer now. That means I can go to the transform and just move it to the side more like that. That already, I feel happier about that. But I'm also going to go to the top layer, transform, and move that across too. I think I prefer to see more of this. I think that's working better. Maybe not quite central just a little bit off. I can always go to the freeform, pinch it in as well. I think I just want to make the center area of this tree just a bit more prominent. I want this to really stand out compared to the bits. Back to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to have a bit more control to so about 3% size and well about 20% opacity. And I just want to create a couple more controlled shapes at the top there. Just push the focus a little bit upward so it's not all just at ground level, something like this. Then I'm going to go to that layer, slide to duplicate it. I'm just going to go to the transform, flip it vertically, move it down, and it's going to go off the bottom of the canvas. I don't really want to move this landmass too much. So I'm going to just squash it slightly. It's on free form and I want it to be contained within the canvas. So I'm just going to condense it so that it's not quite off the bottom. It's not the kind of thing that's really going to mess with the image too much. I think it can work. And then we can go to the adjustments, motion blur, blur it to the side to about 20% anyway. 
Then I'm going to go to the eraser, which is set to the soft brush, 2% size, 10% opacity, and just add a couple of bands in here that just cut and add the sense that there's a break in that water surface and just disrupts the darkness of that reflection. I also think I want to go back to the sky layers and just add a hint more glow. So I've added a color on the very end here, which I'm going to use. It wasn't initially there, but as I'm going through the tutorial, I found that it would be quite a nice color to add to the mix. So I'm going to go back to the layer, layer five, where it had the blend mode to add. And I think I'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush, set it at 2% size and low on the opacity at only 5%. And I'm just going to go in there and just add with this a hint more glow to the image like that. And I think it just, I think it just enhances it, it brings out a bit more intense kind of color and effect. And with this color, we can just ramp up the, the glow effect in areas, not everywhere, not too much, because we don't really want to have to go back into there and amend that. So yeah, it's just subtle, it's just ramping it up a little bit. I think that's working a bit better now. I feel like I want to ramp that sky up even more than I already have. So we've got layer five with the add mode already on. I'm just gonna create another layer on top of that. Change it again from normal to add. Now on our colors, we already added this color, but I'm just gonna add a further bright orange to the mix as well. And I'm gonna use the soft brush, turn it down to 2% size and about 10% opacity. Zoom in a little bit still underneath the mountain layers so I can really go up to some of these edges and it, it won't interfere but I'm just stopping starting to bring in some of this a little bit more I want to just ramp it up a notch even higher than it already was create more of a contrast and just really make it pop a little bit more we're going to turn it down even more to the lowest part of 2% just zoom in just a touch and I can then just with a little bit more accuracy just really add a little bit more specific shapes and then some breakaway kind of thinner stretches as it comes a little lower down as well. And also some broken. I realize this is, it's gone from being quite a subtle effect, which I, I guess is just a matter of personal taste. I really like to push the drama a little bit and I, I did intend to keep it a little bit more subtle, but yeah, I just get a bit carried away with the the contrast and the light and I just prefer it a little bit more. I'm going to put it up to about 10% size down to about 3% opacity and just soften that in a little bit over here as well. Going to that layer I'm just going to slide and duplicate it and yeah even that I, I quite like the the effect that that's had. It might be just a touch too much so I can go to the eraser soft brush 10% size 30% opacity and just dial some of that back. Maybe just preserve some of it, but it is a little bit too much, completely doubled. And then we can just move it, check it. It has added a little extra something there, which I really do like. So we're gonna tap on that layer and merge it down and keep some of that. I think that does work. I'm going to slide and duplicate it once more, but this time I'm going to move it to the top or at least so it's above that inserted image, whoops, try again, that we put down here, because that inserted image was what we used as the reflection. So now I'm going to go to the transform, flip vertically and move that down so that it works somewhere down here, maybe more like about there. Again, it doesn't need to be quite that sharp, so we can go to the adjustments, motion blur, and probably just slide it across find an appropriate place, somewhere around the 30%. I think that works. I'm starting to feel a little happier with that image. However, on that top layer, I'm just gonna to continue to tweak it even more a little bit. So we're gonna stay on the orange, stay on the soft brush, down to 2% size, 5% opacity, and yeah, I just can't stop adding a few more elements up here. I just really like the effect. Go back to the pink, a few more tweaks, and we could even just Add a couple of streaks across the water as well, just where it catches the light, the glow a little bit. Why not? Interrupt some of that blue, not too much, just hints of it. And altogether, I'm just a little bit happier with that, I think, overall. So I'm going to leave that tutorial here at this point. I have taken it even further over at my Patreon page, as you can see. 
So if you want to learn even more detail and the kind of things that I'm showing you here, then you can check that over at my Patreon and become a patron and push it even further. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification if you want to see more content like this. Thanks again for watching, see you soon.